Good morning all. In my last post bag, post bag 86, I bought a couple of these MB102 breadboards. These are the 830 tie point breadboards. And uh, I bought these because I was having a lot of uh, fun playing with this one. This is a 400 tie point breadboard. And you can see um, that I've knocked up a little op amp circuit on here. And I like the fact that there are four power rails, which is ideal for op amp circuits. But whereas this breadboard is good quality, these are not. Now I've got some comments here from uh, Postbag86 and Robert Gibbon says, only trouble with that model breadboard is the side rails are split halfway down. Oh yes, they are. It's even indicated in the red and blue lines. And in fact, uh, there is a break in the power rails there. Yes, that is a bit of a problem. What I hate, Jason Masters says, what I hate about those breadboards is that some moron decided to make a version where the power rails are broken halfway along. Uh, Anvil Shock says, wow, those are the cheapest 830 breadboards I've seen so far. I wonder what their quality is. I had some that were absolutely rubbish with terrible, dodgy, unreliable contacts. And Benjamin Goose says, I found cheap breadboards to be very difficult to work with, almost impossible to insert into some of the holes. Well, let's try it. And uh, Benjamin's right. These don't go into the holes very well. Well, they do in some of them, but some of them it just sits on the surface and it won't slide down unless you wiggle it a bit and then it slides down. And that's not so bad with one wire and a fairly thin wire at that, but it's more difficult with thick wires. That one won't go in. I have to waggle it until it finds its way down into the hole. And actually now there's no connection there at all by the feel of it. So yeah, these are really poor quality. Let's try getting some tantalum capacitors in these boards. And it's almost impossible. I can't get that one to go into two adjacent holes. Ah, oh, there we are. It's gone in. Right, let's try another one. Yeah, that one's gone in. But it's very difficult when you've got both holes resisting the insertion of your component. It just won't go in. So what's the issue here? I think I'm going to have to take this apart and have a look at it. So I've peeled back the uh, sticky. Let's lift out one of these little bus bars and just take a look at it and see why it's so poor. And I think I'm going to have to lift out one from the good breadboard and uh, have a look at them side by side. Yeah, this good breadboard's a bit older and the adhesive's all starting to break up and go dry and the backing sheet is starting to fragment. But I should be able to get one of these things out. Let's have a play with that for a bit. And uh, here's the problem. You can see that the funneling on the good one, which is on the left, is much, much wider than the funneling on the bad one. In fact, there isn't that much funneling at all. There's a little bit of a sort of curved effect where they've slightly opened the center of the pin. Let's get in a little bit closer with this magnifying glass. But I mean, the funneling on the good one is so much wider than the bad one. And that explains why it's so much easier to insert components into the good one than in the bad one. Now, I was wondering whether you could see this from the top and possibly you can see it. You can see those very straight sharp edged lines, which gives you an idea that the uh, metal hasn't been bent fully out. So there's very little funneling there, but it's not easy to see it. And you get reflections off different parts of the pieces of metal. So I'm not sure that's a very good way to tell whether you've got a good one or a bad one. I mean, here's the good one by comparison, and you can see some reflections they're not as sort of sharp and uh, clear as the reflections off the bad one. I'm not sure whether that's the best way to tell. Now you'll notice that the tie points on these boards um, are labelled with a grid. So this one starts at 1 and runs all the way down to 29, in fact 30. Uh, and it goes from A to J on the top. Have a look at the bad ones. They're an absolute joke. For one thing, it's A on this end, but it's J at the other end. So if you're keeping some sort of reference and you want it to be at A0, the fact that zero is halfway between two points 
uh, and doesn't start at the beginning either. So the printing on these boards is just a joke. Uh, A to J and backwards on the other side and uh, 0 to 60, which doesn't really line up with anything. And uh, look at the quality of the printing on the good breadboard. The red and blue lines are very sharp and uh, bold colours and well printed. On this one, they're horribly fuzzy and not printed very well at all. So that's a fairly clear indication that this is poor quality. So if I'd known about the uh, poor lettering, these capital letters that are different at one end to the other, and the very poor print quality, could, have I, could I have avoided buying these poor quality breadboards? Well, not really. Here's the listing for the breadboards that I bought. I bought two, and they were different colours. And if you look at the image, if we close in or zoom in on the image, it's actually showing the lowercase letters and the numbering starting from one. And on the breadboards they sent me, the lettering is the uppercase lettering, which uh, is completely the wrong way around the other end. The numbering starts from zero and is not aligned with the holes. So the seller is showing an image of the higher quality breadboard, if indeed these indicators show quality, but actually gave me the lower quality breadboard and uh, two different colour breadboards. So what can we do to avoid buying fake rip-off rubbish quality breadboards? Well, one thing occurred to me and that is that possibly the rip-offs are of the larger breadboards, the 830 tie point breadboards. Maybe the smaller breadboards aren't yet being ripped off. There is another reason why I quite like the smaller breadboard. And that is that you've got these little connection uh, points where you can lock breadboards together, which are both on the sides, the long side, but also on the end. Now, these ones have little studs. They're not as good quality as these. Uh, so you can lock them together side by side, but there's nothing on the ends. So actually, I think I'd rather make up a large breadboard out of these smaller MB102 uh, 400s. So I've just bought this uh, 10 pieces mini universal solverless breadboard with the 400 uh, contacts or tie points. Uh, taking a bit of a risk here. I'm hoping these will be good quality. I bought them from Alice 110 1983. And uh, I've also bought this. This is a, a solverless MB102 breadboard. It is 830 tie points, but it's transparent. You can see from the image that uh, the plastic is completely see-through. So you can see all the metalwork inside the unit. And I'm hoping that uh, this is another one that won't yet have been faked. So these breadboards are fake. These are a rip off. I mean, it's possible you could use them if you're prepared to persevere and uh, wiggle the components in and wait until they drop in like that. And uh, if you're like me and you tend to build things on breadboard and then rather than dismantle them because you just like the look of them, you buy more breadboard to build more things, then I suppose it doesn't really matter that much. Now, I buy cheap stuff. I make uh, no pretense about the stuff I buy being top quality. It's all cheap. But when they're this bad, then it's not worth the money. So watch out for a fake rip-off breadboards with contacts that have inadequate funneling. Cheerio.